Does regularly supercharging a Tesla lead to increased range loss and shorter battery life? Well, let's dive into various pieces of data and help answer that question. I'm John, and this is Cleaner One. Unfortunately, when it comes to the topic of DC fast charging or supercharging and battery health, there is some conflicting information out there. For instance, researchers may say one thing and fleet data may suggest another. So I'd like to wade through some of this data and uh, help us determine whether or not supercharging your Tesla is something that you should try to limit or if it's not a big deal at all. In order to get some real world data and see if there was a strong connection between supercharging and increased range loss in Teslas, I once again reached out to Tessie, who is the maker of an Android and Apple phone application for your Tesla, which among other things allows you to monitor battery health. Tessie graciously answered my question about supercharging and range loss with the following statement. Supercharging has no statistical effect on battery degradation. For example, we have someone that has supercharged more than 1,500 times over 200,000 miles, which is one of the most extreme usage patterns in the world. Their usable capacity went from 78 kilowatt hours when new to 68 kilowatt hours now, that's about 13% degradation, which is in line with the rest of the Tesla fleet and the retention statistics that Tesla reports. As a reminder, a company like Tessie has access to quite a bit of data on Tesla EVs and battery health, so a statement like this from them has a lot of credibility. Now, when it comes to the topic of fleet averages that Tessie mentioned in their statement, they did share this chart with me that I used in a previous video, which shows the average capacity retention by Tesla model. As you can see on this chart, in general, the greatest amount of capacity loss in a Tesla EV happens pretty early on. And as you approach 100,000 miles, you can see that the capacity loss actually starts tapering off and becomes way more consistent, generally speaking. Tesla also shared this graph in their 2021 impact report, once again showing a very similar capacity retention curve for the Model S and the Model X. Now moving beyond that statement from Tessie, which I believe is very credible once again, um, I think it's important that we look at more pieces of data on this topic, um, starting with a little bit more of a broad approach on this, not just Tesla's only, but um, electric vehicles in general. And what do battery researchers have to say about fast charging and battery health? Well, I found this article from Geotab's website where they analyzed over 6,000 electric vehicles um, to determine various effects of fast charging on EV battery health. Based on Geotab's research, as you can see in this chart that they shared in the article, there definitely was a measurable difference between never DC fast charging and DC fast charging more than three times per month when it comes to the amount of battery capacity loss over time. Geotab's data also found that the battery state of health also varied negatively in hotter climates as compared to temperate climates. I also found another piece of research that talked about how different cathode chemistries react differently to DC fast charging when it comes to capacity fade. This white paper analyzed the connection between fast charging and battery degradation using real driving cycles from battery electric buses driving around three European cities. Here's a chart that they shared in this research paper, which really summarizes uh, their research and their findings when it comes to the capacity fade percentage per year for these three different battery chemistries at three different charging power ratings. And as you can see, the uh, NMC battery chemistry was most affected by charging power when it comes to how that affected uh, capacity fade percentages per year. And as you can see, the lowest amount of capacity fade was measured with the LTO battery chemistry. And even more interestingly enough, when it comes to the LFP battery chemistry, the capacity fade percentage per year was very stable between 200, 400, and 600 kilowatt charging. So this data seems to suggest that if you have a nickel-based battery pack, um, charging power does seem to affect the amount of battery degradation that you see quite substantially more than some of these other chemistries. Now moving beyond general battery research, I found a great article from OptiWatt written by uh, Dalton Hurst. And this article was entitled, How to Maximize Your Tesla's Battery Efficiency in Life. In this article, the author states, Jeff Don, Elon Musk, and Tesla users state, that frequent supercharging poses very little impact on battery capacity degradation. 
However, Dalton does go on to reference an official statement from Tesla that seems to link a large amount of supercharging sessions to a decline in battery health. I believe that when Dalton mentions an official statement from Tesla, that they're referencing a statement from Tesla that was in response to in 2017 when they were limiting the charge rates of certain older Tesla vehicles. In this Electrek article from 2017 on this topic, they published Tesla's official statement, which I believe we can learn a lot from, and that official statement was as follows. The peak charging rate possible in a lithium ion cell will slightly decline after a very large number of high rate charging sessions. This is due to physical and chemical changes inside of the cells. Our fast charge control technology is designed to keep the battery safe and to preserve the maximum amount of cell capacity, talking about range capability, in all conditions. To maintain safety and retain maximum range, we need to slow down the charge rate when the cells are too cold, when the state of charge is nearly full, and also when the conditions of the cell change gradually with age and usage. This change due to age and usage may increase total supercharge time by about 5 minutes, and less than 1% of our customers experience this. Tesla is not slowing down charge rates to discourage frequent supercharging, quite the opposite. We encourage our customers to use the supercharging network at their discretion, and we committed to doubling the number of worldwide chargers just this year. We also want to ensure that our customers have the best experience at those superchargers and preserve as much vehicle range as possible, even after frequent usage. Now, I know that statement was from 2017, and I believe a lot has changed from 2017. Tesla has tweaked the chemistry of their batteries quite a bit, but... I think it's a great official statement where Tesla is really talking about the fact that they're really trying to balance battery health as much as possible. And one of the ways they do this is by having a very advanced battery management system, which when you supercharge really helps keep your battery from being damaged even during fast charging. So let's talk about Tesla's BMS systems and BMS systems in general for a minute and kind of help answer the question, kind of tying this all together, is supercharging your Tesla bad for battery health? If electric vehicles did not have battery management systems or BMS systems, um, fast charging would destroy batteries very quickly. And the reason really comes down to how batteries work. When a lithium ion battery charges, lithium ions move from the cathode material and they intercalate into the anode material. The rate at which this process can happen is determined by several factors, including the characteristics of the anode material itself, the state of charge, and the temperature of the battery cells. If the charge rate is too high, this causes too many ions to try to jam into the anode material all at one time, and this allows for lithium to plate on the anode surface, which leads to less lithium ions available, thus leading to battery capacity loss and battery degradation. However, of course, Tesla, like other EV manufacturers, they have a very sophisticated BMS or battery management system that limits the amount of power that a battery can actually receive based on a number of various factors and the state of that particular battery. The battery management system also balances the charge rate between individual battery cells to avoid overcharging any one battery cell in that pack. The results of a battery management system can be seen when you look at various charging curves for electric vehicles. For instance, here's data comparing uh, charging curves for a 2170 equipped Model Ys and 4680 equipped Model Ys with data from out-of-spec reviews on YouTube and spoken reviews on YouTube. And as you can see, when the state of charge is around 10% or so, the charge rate is very high. But as you move towards a full battery, as you move towards a 100% state of charge, you can see that that charge rate actually gets quite small. In addition, while you might see an electric vehicle advertised as having a charging rate of, say, a max of 250 kilowatts or 270 kilowatts, for instance, when it comes to the actual average charging rate during a charging session, that number is usually quite substantially lower than that. For instance, according to evdatabase.org, when you look at the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y long range of performance, although the max charging power may be 250 kilowatts, during a 10% to 80% charge, the average power rating is only 124 kilowatts. That gives us an average C rate during that charge of 1.5 C. So as you can see with the charging curve and when we talk about average charging power, Tesla's BMS system is really protecting your battery. It is really balancing not only charging as quickly as possible, but at the same time protecting your battery. Um, at the end of the day, Tesla wants your battery to last a long time as well, 
because number one, they don't want warranty claims. They don't want you to supercharge your battery in a way that's going to lead to the battery failing under warranty. They want to limit that, of course, but they also want good customer service as well. So when you supercharge your Tesla, the BMS system is doing its best to balance as quick a charge as possible without damaging your battery. So as you can see, there are various opinions out there um, as to how much effect supercharging has on the battery health of your Tesla. I think if you take just a general basic balanced approach on this, you'll listen to all pieces of information. And if you want to be conservative, you might somewhat limit the amount of supercharging that you do. It doesn't appear like supercharging has a large effect though, because as I mentioned, Tesla's BMS system is trying to maintain good battery health and protect your battery. Will your battery last longer if you only slow charge? Science seems to suggest that it will, but if you take care of your battery in other ways, like limiting the daily charge limit on your non-LFP equipped models to around 80% and not fully discharging your battery, etc. general battery advice that we've talked about in the past, and if you follow Tesla's other advice as laid out in their owner's manual, I believe that this with Tesla's advanced BMS battery system, which is designed to protect your battery, will help keep your battery pretty healthy. So if you only have access to Tesla superchargers and that's how you have to charge, I wouldn't worry about it too much. However, if given the choice, personally, I would lean towards, you know, charging at home as much as possible at a slower rate and supercharging when needed. But nonetheless, I wouldn't worry too much about supercharging killing my battery. Um, after all, once again, Tesla has designed their cars in such a way that they, as they said in the statement in 2017, actually encourage supercharging. So don't worry about it too much. Don't stress out too much. Just enjoy your car and do other things to protect your battery health and follow the other advice that Tesla gives. And don't worry so much about supercharging. That's my advice. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below if you have an opinion on this. And also, if you have something to add, if you're a battery uh, expert or a battery researcher, or if you work in the battery industry and you have information that you'd like to share with me or insights or clarifications, feel free to email me. My email address is john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. Again, john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. Um, please email me. I'd love to hear from you. I'd also like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.